Here's a big one, folks. Here's a big one. Friend of show, Dean Phillips, uh, appeared on yeah. the <laughs> Brianna Joy Gray uh, Bad Faith podcast for about an hour and 20 minutes sit down, which uh, he ended up cutting off for reasons that uh, we will see uh, in due time. Uh, but I want to pick this up where they get to Israel, Gaza, because Dean Phillips has criticized the Netanyahu government. He has tried to position himself to Joe Biden's left on this issue, which there's a whole lot of room there. But he has time and again stopped short of condemning Israel for committing war crimes. He will not go there, much less the G word. Right. Um, And he is at the end of the day, as we will see, a fairly doctrinaire Zionist, which Brianna does a pretty good job uh, of exposing in this interview. And so there's a little bit here, um, but we will start uh, in just a second. I just want to say before we start, he does mention at some point, he says, I'm expressing empathy for black people, and that might strike people as, whoa, where'd that come from? To his credits, to be fair, okay, um, Brianna does mention before I cut in because he says, well, you know, Jews uh, need a safe space to go if they are being discriminated against. Israel is a safe haven for the Jews of the world to go where they will be safe in their own state. And Brianna it, makes the it, point. It, you know, that's the first thing I think of when I think of Israel safe. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Israel uh, is safe and effective. But Brianna makes the point. Could, she says, you could well, call it a prophylactic for the Jewish. Yeah, people. right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Brianna makes the point, I'm a black woman. I don't always feel safe in this country. I don't have a state where I get to go to where that the U.S. funds and props up constantly. Right. So when he says that, to be fair to him, as much as I can't stand the fucking guy, he's not pulling that out of nowhere. He is alluding to right. something that she said a few right. moments ago. All right. right. So that's about as as kind as we're going to be to Dean Phillips over the next 15 or so minutes. So let's uh, let's start the insanity. Empathize. When you tell the story of Jewish ships, being, ships full of Jewish people after the Holocaust being turned away, I've spoken at length on this podcast about how disgusted I was to discover that Otto Frank and Frank's father was application was turned away and how close they came to be able to immigrate to America. I'm disgusted by it. But the question is, why should the actions of a, a anti-Semitic America and an anti-Semitic Europe be paid for by the people of Palestine who had absolutely nothing to do with the horrors of the Holocaust? I mean, Brianna. Oh, you know, let, let me let me time out. No answer there, right? No answer for that question. All you could do is shake your head and deflect and go back to your talking points. We've made that exact yeah. same point on this show. And even and if you are offended. a Zionist, even if you believe in a Jewish state, if the Jews need a state, we I could say as a Jewish guy ourselves, Russell and I, if we needed a state after World War II, which I don't buy that we did. But if we do, we have New York State already. (laughs) Yeah, we don't need another one. (laughs) We have Suffolk County, right? Forget New York State. We got Long Island, right? We got Brooklyn. Um, But if we needed a state, Germany was split up after World War II. They're the ones who did the crime. Why not there? Why is it incumbent upon Arabs in the Middle East to pay for the crimes of an anti-Semitic Europe? And notice it was as if he's never been asked that question before. He shook his head. Yeah, yeah, parts of Florida, Boca, right? Nothing. Right. No answer. No answer. Instead, he pivots back to his talking points. Strike at the heart of what you just said earlier, which is my empathy for Black America and the long tail of slavery that is so abhorrent and so visible and so obvious. That I- so that's what I meant. So he's referring to her saying, well, I don't have a state that I can go to that's a puppet state mm-hmm. of the United States. So that's what he's talking mm-hmm. about there. I cannot believe we have not repaired that injustice. I want to honor that and acknowledge that. If anything, I'm telling you, I empathize with that. I was asking for mutual empathy, and I don't know if you just shared it with me, but I think you did. But you just asked a question of, of something that is just, it, I, it's just so historically inaccurate. Israel has been attacked because it's a Jewish state for decades. Now, Netanyahu is a different story. I'm not going to I'm not going to support him. What's happening right now is abhorrent and his policies are abhorrent. It's true. And you can imagine it's not an easy thing to say for someone like me, but it is true. And I'm bold and I'm being honest and I understand I cannot. Uh, Okay, I I, I just want to address this because a lot of the liberal Zionists will blame all the bad of Israel on Netanyahu, he's a very convenient scapegoat for what is essentially an apartheid political project. The basic premises of Israel 
could have led to no type of government other than a fascist government. It's a fascist premise. The the problem with Netanyahu is very much the problem with Trump. He takes the mask off the reality of what the Israeli state actually is. The problem didn't start with Netanyahu. Netanyahu is a result of the core premises of Israel. You inevitably are going to end up with a strong man who's just going to go out and slaughter the Palestinians because you're never going to get these people to just accept your occupation and your apartheid state. They're always going to fight back. So the people who are trying to keep this project going eventually are going to back a strong man who's going to slaughter them. Yeah, that, that's and, where and, that goes. And it's not so eventual either. Benjamin Netanyahu has been a prominent political figure within Israel for more than half of its existence. In the 80s, right. he was their representative to the UN. Right. So he has been not the prime minister, but he's been a very prominent figure representing the Israeli state for the majority of its history. Now, this is his 40th year. I believe he started in 84. Could be wrong about that, but I know it was in the 80s. So you're talking about four decades out of Israel's eight decades of existence. Uh, good point. All right, we're going to keep going. He's ta- he took the mask off, very much like Trump. Taibbi, speak of, speak of the speak of the devil. He uh, he early on in Trump's uh, term uh, said, you know, the problem they have with Trump is he takes the mask off the reality, and that's very much the case with Netanyahu. You got a guy going out there talking about Amalek, right. and you know, just straight out making it clear that this is a racist, fascist state. Uh, you know, they you, you get the the more liberal prime ministers, and they they're more able to sell the idea that it's complicated, right? right. It's complicated. He he doesn't say it's not complicated. It's a, and then you know people like Dean Phillips want to blame Netanyahu. Netanyahu is is not the cause. He's the symptom. Exactly. Let's keep going. Tolerate seeing this any longer, but Israel has been attacked since the day it was established by the free world after the Holocaust. It was attacked rep- by its neighbors and they survived. That's like, and they- saying, that's like saying that American settlers were attacked by Native Americans because they were white Excellent or because they were point. Christian. Oh, Let's see how he reacts to that. Holy moly. Just, yep. it's, I'm, it's, I'm, it's, I'm, holy. I'm, um, I, I'm just, I got to tell you, it, I'm, I'm, I'm expressing empathy for Palestinians, what for Muslims, thing. for black Americans. I just, I'm not feeling what, um, I, I'm surprised to be honest with you, and I'm offended. What is surprising about this, Representative? Uh, that was that was a fantastic you're point. You're offended. That was a fantastic it, uh, well, point. Well, exactly. That is right. the core contradiction exactly. right. in the entire Israeli project. She nailed it. And all he can do, all any of them can do, the supposedly liberal ones, is retreat to being offended. You're offended about what? About what? What about that analogy is incorrect? No, it's the perfect analogy. Absolute. Pit- I couldn't have picked a better one myself. I couldn't believe it. When she said that, I'm like, God damn, that was perfect. That was perfect. That's the lawyer in her. Yeah. And man, was that good. And again, no answer whatsoever. Well, Let's he, keep- his answer is to be offended. Right. His only answer is to that, call that, her an anti-Semite, all low key, which is what he did. That's what yep. he did to Crystal and Kyle. And, you know, yep. look, as much as we are not fans of Kyle, I got to give Kyle credit. He said, basically, you're just basically called me an anti-Semite. You know, right. like you're claiming offense. You just called me an anti-Semite. Kyle didn't make as good a point as, as she did. But similar thing. That's all they have. All right, here we go. The, I'm just surprised. The, I'm surprised we, by we, the we lack. Of, I just explained it. I'm surprised by the lack of empathy of progressives relative to the Jewish people and the state well, of Israel. You, not Benjamin Netanyahu. What do you say, Dean Phillips, to the mm-hmm. thousands and thousands of Jewish advocates for Palestinian rights who comprise organizations like If Not Now and Jewish Voice for Peace and people like, frankly, Bernie Sanders? I think could go a little farther. He still won't say the word ceasefire, but he was arguing in front of Congress to uh, actually have us follow our own laws and limit aid based on the humanitarian mm-hmm. actions of Israel. Uh, you know, like it, it, it. This is not a issue on which Jewish people are all on one side or the other. I'm, I had a, a Holocaust East, historian <laughs> from Dartmouth <laughs> on a couple of weeks ago talking about all of the different prongs of Zionism and how we have this revisionist history of what it means to be a Zionist and how many. Jewish thought leaders from Albert Einstein all the way down were highly critical of the Zionist project precisely because they saw it as replicating the harms that were done to Jews in Europe on a new population. And that never again was supposed to mean never again for anyone. We're not talking about a historical record where Jewish people just decided to immigrate to the land of Palestine and live alongside. There were Jews, Arab Jews, that lived in Palestine since time immemorial. That's not the question. And peace and prosperity. 
The question is whether or not a land grant from a colonial power like the UK can be given because of guilt, much well-earned guilt, frankly, over their the anti-Semitism and a refusal to accept the victims and the survivors of the Holocaust and to offload the issue onto another part of the world. And as I'm sure you're aware, there was a conversation about whether or not Israel should be located in Africa. But for various reasons, and I highly recommend people go back to listen to our uh, episode with the Zionist historian, historian of Zionism, it ended up being in Palestine. And so that is a kind of original sin that I see as very akin to where the Jewish people originated. I mean, ah, that, that's, that's, that's the whole fine. point. That's the whole that's point. That's, fine. That's, fine. That's, that's where the Jewish people originated. So he doesn't view it as an original sin because he views Palestine as the Jewish homeland. And therefore, their settlement there is not an original sin. The forceful displacement of the Palestinian people to create the state of Israel. Brianna says that's the original sin. He obviously doesn't believe that. Why? Because Dean Phillips is, and I say this as a Jewish white man myself, he is a Jewish supremacist and a white racist. Plain and simple. You are both those things if you do not concede that the Nakba was the original sin of the Israeli state. There's no nice way to put that. You might not view yourself that way. He views himself as a very compassionate, liberal, peace-loving man, but you are a Jewish supremacist and you are a white racist if you think that it was okay to forcibly remove people from their homes to create the state of Israel based on a biblical claim to an ancient land. Well, and what he's saying, if you're going to base everything on a biblical claim, that's not even true. They would have started in Africa, actually, right. Right. before moving into the Middle East. Um, and again, I mean, it's a it's a ridiculous it's a ridiculous thing to say. There were people who were there who governed it before the Jews, the Persians. Do the Persians have a claim? Should the Persians come and take over? Does, should, does Iran, the successor state to Persia, have a claim to this region? It's it's ridiculous on the face of it. Uh, this one, Elon Pape definitely said. It's one of my favorite quotes from him. Uh, mo most Jews are secular. Most Israelis are secular. But they all believe God promised them Israel. Right. Right. Exactly. All right. Let's keep going. The whole point, that's where the Jewish people originated. You cannot have... There are Ukrainian Jews and Russian Jews and Polish Jews and French Jews and British Jews and Jewish people who have been living in Europe for centuries and decades, de centuries and centuries. And on the other hand, you have Palestinians who are 80 years old, who are clutching the keys to the houses that they grew up in. that are on the yeah. other side of the wall who have been told that they cannot go home because uh, uh, exactly. uh, my, my Jewish friend who's born in Philadelphia gets to have a right of return, but they do not. Hmm. Like that, no answer. That Just the point that we're... See, he doesn't actually have a problem with any of what she's saying. Right. He's opposed right. to the violence, right? He doesn't want the barbaric violence now. He's he is affected by that, which is more than I can say for Joe Biden, apparently. So well, good well, for again, you. Again, Elon Pape, you. there's no such thing as a liberal Israeli. Exactly. But he does not have any objections to anything she's saying if he did he'd be voicing them he's not he's shaking his head nervously he's nodding let's see right. if he has anything let's see how he uh how he responds wait till you see this it's coming up in a little bit talking about here if we're talking mm -hmm. about moral weight and what was deserved after the holocaust you have my utmost sympathy you have my utmost empathy but the question isn't what what is owed it is what is owed from whom and why is it that yes. europe gets to offload right. its own responsibilities the, the jewish state wasn't in poland I bet you a whole lot of people who have been chased out of their lands and put into concentration camps would have loved to feel safe in a land where they spoke the language and they had their own community and they had their own belongings and the like. But this is the, the only reason the they were living there, Brianna, is because they were forced there by the czar. I, I, it's hard to it's hard to listen to. But go ahead. I'm I'm just I don't. I, I, I'm I don't offended, I don't believe but I'm, I'm listening. I mean, <laughs> that's fine. To say, and, and we can all sit here and be offended. I'm offended. But the question now isn't really, it, and it's, it's a moot point because in lar large part, Israel won this battle. They have but, established but, 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 a country. If I could just say, you know, you're, 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 you're attacking me in a weird, in a funny way because I'm telling you, I she's want. She's not attacking I, I you. What's so interesting is I'm not. She's not. She's owning you. She's dominating you in this debate. If you could even call it a debate, it's so one sided. I hesitate to even use the word debate. She's dismantling you. She's exposing you as a Jewish supremacist and a white racist, but she's not attacking you. She's She right. hasn't called you right. any names. She has right. not been hostile. She's been totally cool. She's been very right. well presented. She's cool as a cucumber. 
Nobody's attacking. The, the, ol- the only claim he had, the only response he had was essentially a biblical claim. Of, of course. Of course. And that, that's all any of them have. We have, we have, we have, uh, and this clip has been getting more play lately because of the circumstances. I had never seen it before October 7th of uh, Chuck Schumer you know, saying that they very dismissively, the Torah promised Israel to the Jews, but they don't believe in the Torah. Can you imagine what they would do with it if, if Elon, Ilhan Omar said something like that in reference to a Muslim right. text? Right? Or they even promised one of these us right-wing this, but they Christian don't believe types. in the Quran. Right. Can you imagine what they would do with that? Or a Christian. No. Or if a Christian said something like that. I mean, they make hay of things like that all the time. Right. Nothing. Yep. Nothing. That went completely unremarked that you have uh, you have the leader of the Senate basing policy on the Bible and yep. and very being very dismissive of anyone who does not accept the his religion's take on the right of his people to that land. Well, certainly this guy's going to come up with something to say at some point, is he not? I'm sure you heard what I said. I'm a Jewish man running for president of the United States. Yeah, we America, got that part. Who wants to recognize the state of Palestine. I believe that right, we should but, invest in the state yes. of Palestine. I, well, and, if I, could just, I, if I could just say what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to be a voice of decency, of compassion, of reason in the absence of it. And if you look at the other people running for president, Brianna, my goodness, I'm telling you, I'm appalled. I want this to end. It should, it should have never started. And yes, Hamas is a horrific, despicable terrorist organization that needs to be eliminated. Benjamin Netanyahu should not be, I don't think, the prime minister of Israel moving forward. And I pray that Israelis make a change. Israel is the only multicultural, multi-faith, free country in the in the entire Middle East. As Richie Torres says, it's and the only place where again. he as a gay man could be alive, let here alone thrive. And look at I'm trying to be I'm trying to be decent. Okay, Brianna, I'm just trying to be I'm trying to be compassionate and decent. Gay marriage isn't legal in Israel. Gay, I'm sorry? Gay, gay, marriage is, gay marriage is not legal in Israel. And interfaith marriage is not legal in Israel. People have to fly to Cyprus to get married if you want to marry a Christian or a Muslim or anybody else. I, I mean, like, let's just be honest about what we're doing in the here. Middle East. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm... I mean, let's just be the, the question, the reason we're, we're, we're circling around, I appreciate that, frankly, yes, you are, I think, closer to my politics than Joe Biden, for sure. And, and that's what we're talking Something. about in the Democratic hey, Party. Brianna. But the... But the Brianna, question... I, I, I'm, I, Brianna, I would love to continue the conversation. I was just notified, actually, that something uh, serious just happened. I've got, oh, yeah, okay. something I'm serious sorry, did just happen I just here. do want to get this out. My question was about why you don't support a one-state solution. That's why we're here, because the reality is Let, that the, the, Brianna, the elected I would love officials to, I'd like— love, First of all, I'd love to—I I seriously have to go. Let me tell you this. I, I would love to have this conversation because I like to learn, and I like, thought, I, I, I like to understand your perspective on it. I'd like to listen to others, too. I, I'm not so hardened in my heart on anything— that thoughtful perspectives from other people can't change my mind. I'd like to listen and learn to you. I have my own opinions. I did not mean to be antagonistic at all. In fact, I, I'm, I don't, I'm I don't suffering feel like, like a lot of people right now. And by the way, I want to honor yours. Yeah. I got to go. I got to go. And I'm so sorry, but I'd love to continue the conversation. All right. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Where do, I, where, do, where do I sign up to volunteer for that guy? Well, yeah, well, I thought you were going to say volunteer because one of the things that Brianna said before she let him go, she says, well, maybe you'll come back and we'll get some Jewish panelists here who can, you know, say similar things to what I'm saying. And he wouldn't be able to feign offense uh, with us because if I got to say and then look, that was uh, she did a better job than I'd have done when I visited him at his town hall event in New Hampshire. But I was going to say something to a similar effect and I was going to say. I'm a Jewish man myself. I'm sorry. You can't just hide behind a fence. What she said was not offensive at all. No. Not no. in the slightest. And no. she just a- obviously, I mean, he obviously had nothing to say. He said nothing except I'm offended. And then he said he had to go. I mean, right. th- I mean, that was as one-sided a quote-unquote debate as you could possibly uh, watch. And good for her. She was very masterful there. And it really shows you. They got nothing on the other side. How do you justify right. what is clearly, clearly a settler colonial project? And I, I've, I've gone back to this since the first article I wrote after October 7th. You've been spending at least a decade pushing the idea that our our colonial past is racist and has created horrific scars in society. 
and that we we need to take extraordinary means and we need to apply equity rather than equality. You've been applying all of these standards until it came up in real time, until it stopped being a historical question where nothing can really be done. And it became a current question that affects U.S. foreign policy, that affects our interests. Then all of a sudden, all that shit went out the window. What can yes. you say after 10 years of telling people colonizing people is wrong, the imposing terror on people in the interest of taking their land and creating a, uh, a two different classes of people based on race or culture or religion is just the absolute worst thing huma- humans have ever done to each other and then come out and say, yeah, no, we, we need to support Israel as it genocides the Palestinian people. You just you just can't do it. All he could say was, it, all he could do was invoke a biblical justification. Please clap.